the arts and um, to support Susan. Uh, I'm particularly thrilled that we are showing Susan's work here. Uh, the circle has truly come full round. Um, Susan worked here for many years, not in this new part of the building, but in the farmhouse um, back when we were, uh, back when North Branch was part of Vins. Susan lives in uh, South Woodbury and she works for another Vins offspring, the Four Wings Nature Institute, which is how I first met Susan. Um, and many of you know that she has a long um, career in art. She holds a BA in printmaking and botany from the New College in Sarasota, Florida, an MFA from Vermont College, and a diploma in botanical art from the Society of Botanical Artists in London. But I want to tell you why she is one of my favorite teachers. Um, maybe some of you have studied with her and know some of us and um, have stories. I'd love to hear them. Uh, Susan's going to give a few remarks and then we'll return to uh, socializing and uh, enjoying the work. And like I said, if you have any stories of Susan, I'd love to hear them. Um, one of the, I, I feel like Susan's particular skill is in marrying the science and the art. So she does that in her representations of what she studies. And she also does that in her teaching. Um, when my child started kindergarten, Five years ago, I immediately signed up to be a Four Winds volunteer teacher in his classroom because I had heard that it was a great way to, uh, you know, get in your child's classroom and fill the hours that, for them, for me, I have been at home with my son uh, for his early childhood. Uh, I had these, you know, incredibly long days yawning in front of me from 8:30 to 3. <laughs> so <laughs> it gave me a chance to, to get into the classroom and um, and and see what, what's, what public school teaching was all about, um, which I had really not experienced since I had been a student myself. Um, and it was all that, Four Winds was all that, but what I hadn't realized was how much I myself would learn. And so basically every month, Stu Susan works with parent volunteers all around Vermont. I live in Montpelier, so we were at Union. Um, but she takes this, uh, melange of adults who do or do not have time to do this in their work week, but are figuring out how. Um, and most of whom have absolutely no natural history background. And she gives these fabulous rich trainings that are basically detailed primers on everything from leaf miners uh, to the science of snowflakes, and all with all of these tons of fun activities to do with the students. Um, so you turn around after you've spent a morning with Susan learning it in the next month, you turn around and teach to your child and 21 other children. <laughs> so clearly her skill as an artist, um, she was able to marry with her skill as a teacher. Um, so you can see for yourself that her, she, her close observations of nature, puzzling out what she sees and beautifully translating it into two dimensions um, is a passion. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share that her artistic skills are equally matched by her ability to um, gather people of any age and teach to them what she sees and the scientific process. Um, so with that, I'll just put in a little plug. Um, I highly recommend if you too would like this opportunity to learn from Susan. <coughs> She's teaching two classes, two um, weekend day classes uh, coming up in the fall here at Northbridge. Uh, journaling, nature journaling is in September. I think that one's on a Sunday. One of them's on a Saturday, one of them's on a three, Sunday. Three Sundays. Oh, okay. So I have nature journaling and nature illustration, and you can go to northbranchnaturecenter.org to learn all the details. You get it right. And <laughs> you get the right dates. Um, and I really encourage you to do that. And yeah, without any further ado, I will turn it over to Susan. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, the Nature Center for inviting me to, to show here because this beautiful new building has a place for art on it. And, and uh, I don't show very much. Um, I draw a lot and um, and I don't show a lot. I, I draw things that get published more than anything. Um, 
or, and I draw and paint things that get put in the flat files. <laughs> Can you speak just a little louder? I'll try. Okay. <laughs> try. Um, so making pictures is a way of communicating without talking. Um, some of us prefer not to speak in languages that don't require talking. So here I am talking about making pictures, which it's a little weird, but I, I won't. So I won't talk for very long. Uh, but there's some things I wanted to tell you. Um, I do this work because I really like plants. I love plants. I've been looking at them forever. Since I was a very small child, I've been looking at plants um, very closely. Uh, my great aunt Frances, who was a naturalist, used to show up in the summertime. And at the time when I was sure that I was going to grow up and be a mammologist so that I could hug furry things, I think that's what I thought I was going to do. <laughs> aunt Frances said, um, well, you know, uh, you might not see them very often. They're only they're out at night. <laughs> And the plants are here all the time. And she was right. The plants are there all the time. If you go see them, they're, um, they have roots. They don't go anywhere. They don't run around. They don't fly away. They don't look at you with eyes. Um, they don't make a lot of noise, except when the wind's coming up and the wind hits the ridge. Um, and then they're noisy. But mostly, they're very quiet. So I think people don't think about them as much as I wish they did. Um, I think they're, I think they're some of the most interesting things on Earth, and they're everywhere, everywhere. Sometimes I, I don't know why I have this recurring thought. I'm driving down the road, and I think, um, how many leaves am I looking at? <laughs> it's a big number. Um, hi, can we get, can we get Dave in here? Is he coming? Okay, good. Because there's a chair up here for me. Are you supposed to be up there? Um, I don't. I don't know if we could use that door. We could do whichever's easier. That door okay. or this way. Okay, that's my husband. Come on. Um, so I try to make pictures. Uh, I try to make pictures I haven't seen before. There is a lot of art. Uh, there's a lot of pictures of plants out there. Um, what I and you might look around here and think, oh, she hates flowers. <laughs> uh, but I don't hate flowers. I actually love flowers. I just have not chosen to give them. Um, they get all the attention already. So, uh, so I've chosen not to make very many pictures of flowers. But instead, they're pictures of um, a lot of woody plants and small parts of them and up close. Because up, up, close up close is really interesting. Where there are pictures of, um, of trees out in the lobby and, and in here, um, there's the pictures of the, the, there's a rock at Tunbridge School up at the edge of the playground. Some of you have seen it. Um, it's kind of up the hill, but it's at the base of a, one of those round Tunbridge hills. Um, and, it's, and it's right at the edge where it turns to woods. And there's basswood and ash growing together um, and actually so close to each other that it's hard to tell it's not um, kind of all one tree. Uh, and the bark is similar enough that you have to kind of stand there and then look at the leaves and go, oh, right, that's the ash, that's the basswood. And the little children play under it, under that rock and those trees every day. And so when you go up, they've, they've worn all the dirt from around the roots. And there's the little dinosaurs. <laughs> and little trucks and little trucks and the roots and it's really that place so, so when I do that it's about the place that I'm in um, it's about the big fallen down maple there that when I drew it um, had been fallen for 30 years and, and with its roots still in the creek it, it's a Jerry's house and is it still alive Jerry? no it's there. It's there. So, so it was, it was um, still alive, and some of the side branches had become part of the canopy. They were trying to be trees on their own right, but with a very small you No, know, it wasn't, so I didn't think it would last too much time. Um, so, so place is really important. 
and it's a pattern. So a lot of the time when you look at something, you okay, what what is interesting about this picture? And it's often uh, it's often that there was some kind of repeating and varied pattern. Um, and that, I think that's something that I, I see here. Um, it's nice to see it out. Um, I'm not sure I knew that, but that's how it looks to be. So most of these images, in fact all of them really, except for one, are what you could call botanical art. Um, and that's art that uh, depicts a plant with as much accuracy as possible. Um, but it's done uh, for the picture itself. It's done for the sake of making a picture um, to look at. The one piece in here I would say is a botanical illustration is the, 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 um, the ink drawing of the Indian pipes over there. Um, what a funny plant. I was just trying to figure it out. It's this ghost thing. And when somebody tells you it's a flower, it's a flower. Um, but it's a really interesting flower, you know, with a uh, relationship uh, uh, with fungus and with tree roots. And, and so it it's, uh, has the oddest clump of roots that, you know, no bigger than that. Um, if you pull it up, um, and when you cut and look in the cells, I don't know what I'm looking at really when I when I sliced those cells and looked inside them, but it looks like um, I'm, I'm speculating here that that the um, fungus is inside the cells. In the root. And I'm sure somebody can correct me. I'll, I'll learn something that'll be good. Um, but when I was looking, at, I was opening the seed pod, and it, dust came out. Um, Here's Dave, come on in, if you want to. <laughs> um, um, so, so, I, so I thought there were no seeds. I thought, oh well, this one didn't make seeds. I said there's no seeds. Jerry said, look again. <laughs> so, so I looked again, um, and I put them under the microscope. And they're like, this is where I need color. They're like a little butterscotch wrapped in cellophane. <laughs> they're weensy. They're so small. Um, but they're beautiful and, and sparkly. And that's all the Indian pipe needs for seeds. Um, so that, that was remarkable. So, so sometimes here I'm, I'm discovering things while I'm drawing. And I think that's, that's true. Um, uh, because you draw in order to see. There are many things you don't see until you sit down and draw it. Um, so, about drawing. Um, it's full, but it's hard. Um, it's, but, it, it's, it's so, but it's simple. So, pencil, paper, that's all you need. Oh, I like that about drawing. That you don't need anything expensive to do it. You can do it wherever you are, whenever. Um, and it's one reason to keep doing it. You can carry a sketchbook anywhere. And I draw so that I can see things. It's, and when you see, look at a drawing, hey, sweetie, there's, there's a chair for you there. Um, uh, when, when you draw, and when you look at somebody's drawing, this is another reason why I love drawing, you can see somebody's brain working and what their hand does. It's so immediate. When, when the painting happens, there's all this stuff that happens. There's planning, and there's a drawing first, and it's very complete. And then you trace it, and you transfer the, the, the drawing to the paper, and, and you erase almost all of it. But you've got your original drawing for reference, and then you have the photographs you took, because everything wilts. <laughs> and then you paint it, and that's a painting, and that's got this long, all those steps. But a drawing is just there. It's just immediate. Um, and I, I love looking at them. It's like looking at somebody's handwriting. Um, only better. And you can see what, you can look at what, the, what was that person paying attention to? Why was that worth drawing? I recommend it. <laughs> the, the mediums here are uh, primarily just graphite pencil on paper. Um, but they're and they're very they're hard pencils. So I use a, a oftentimes a two H pencil, which is relatively hard, sharpened, and I use a, a very sharp pencil because you can get detail and keep it. 
um, when, you, when you're using a pencil, you can erase it, which is really great. <laughs> At silver point, you can't erase. And there's a couple of silver points here, and I do more of them, but they're not in the show because they have their own problems. Um, but I'm going to hand around a few of them so you can look at what they're like. Um, silver point is drawing with a piece of silver. Um, and the way we do it now is we get a, buy a piece of soft silver wire and put it in a mechanical pencil holder. It's very, you know, and draw with it. But you can't draw on paper with it because you would just make a hole in the paper. So you have to um, prepare the paper or the piece of wood with a ground that has enough mineral in it um, that, that it'll scratch, the, sil the silver will scratch off on it. Just enough abrasion so that you can get a line with the silver. Um, you can also draw with gold. And I have a, a gold point back there where you can try it out. Um, but it's interesting. It, 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 you, know how we, you know how we use a streak plate? Two of my colleagues yes. are here. So, so we use a streak plate to test a, a rock to see what it would be, because you can take a gray stone, and the streak may be rusty colored. Um, the this, this, this streak of silver um, is silver, but it tarnishes. That's the great thing about it. It gets that warm, dark color eventually, after time, and people breathing and stuff. It's sulfur that turns it. It's sulfur that turns it. Um, that color, you can't erase it with, well, with great difficulty. Um, and it, Rest the surface, um, and it doesn't get very dark. But it has a, it has a quality that, that I think is not like anything else. And then it has this problem, which is when you put glass on it, it doesn't look much different from a pencil drawing, and it's very difficult to photograph. But I'm going to pass uh, a few of these around. Um, these are from another project, and these are done on on uh, panels of, of basswood, um, which Dave made for me. Um, he cut them and, and uh, planed them by hand, and I gessoed them with real gesso, uh, which is a mix of rat skin glue cooked up and, and powdered, um, basically powdered marble, some stuff called whiting. Um, and there's six coats and it's wet sanded in between. It's nice. It's a very nice surface. Um, this, this odd object that's coming around are the um, the bones of the snapping turtle <laughs> in the back of the shell. Uh, and do you not want us to touch the surface? I would prefer it. <laughs> <that you didn't. laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, no, you can hand it around. But I'm it's okay. Yeah, I want you to see it. Don't touch the I want you to see it, because it's pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> and then this is another one. This is the other side of the same two bones. This bones in the back of the turtle shell. So that you, you can see the scoots, right? And they're made of <clears throat> tortoise shell, right? <laughs> and it's like fingernails. But when the turtle is dead and decaying, and I got in trouble with my family because the turtle was dead and decaying in August outside the house. <laughs> I heard about it. I was gone. Um, anyway, so, so when the, uh, so when the scoots, the, the outer, um, tortoise shell part comes off, then their bones are underneath and their joints are at completely different places. And the bones have these long projections on them and, and they're knit together. So, and this is silver point. That's silver point and that's that warm brownish color that you can't get with anything else. And then this, this one isn't quite so delicate, and you know, I can hold it on the edges, but just. And this one is, that, that one is, um, Under the well, long story about that one. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, so, and that's, that's a microscopic view of plant cells, so that's where you can start with that one. So that's silver point, and I set it up back there so that you can try it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so silver point, and then, and then there's pen and ink, and pen and ink is um, easily reproducible, very visible. Um, 
terrifying <laughs> because it's ink, you know? You got the white paper and then suddenly you put the ink on it and you can't do anything about it. <laughs> it's in the wrong place. Well, there's the ink. <laughs> and thank goodness for Photoshop and this little scarisa. <laughs> and there's watercolor here. Watercolor is a watercolor uh, deserves its, its reputation for being difficult. Um, doesn't deserve its reputation for being out of control, unless that's how you paint. Um, but this kind of painting is, is not loose versus, you know, it's not very exuberant either. So it means, you know, there's a lot to say. Um, uh, one little thing on another. Um, but I, li I really like working in watercolor. I can't say, I have not been doing it for very long. I've really only been painting with watercolor for um, uh, maybe 20 years. <laughs> it sounds like a long time, but when you're a part-time designer, it really feel like a lot of practice. We may be able to get rid of the So, that's mostly what I wanted to say. So, yes. Did you put any of this under a magnified black? I wear this thing on my head. Yeah, this one. Ah. Now, I could, when I was younger, I could see perfectly well, uh -huh. very close up, and I can't now. And I borrowed a <coughs> um, magnifier that he used for doing all railroad work and went, oh. <laughs> it fits over your glasses and you can flip it up. Uh, it's, 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 the one I have is called a magnifocuser. Um, and you can look at the specimen and your drawing at the same time. It's a great thing for us getting older. Um, so did I say plants are important? I, I hope that when you look at these, it makes you want to go make friends with a plant because they're out there and they're, um, they're, such, good, they're such characters. Yes. And we need to take care of, you know, as much as we can, uh, it would be nice if we could avoid killing them. That's, Really, it's what I'm hoping for. It's what I hope for. I would like to meet as many plants as I can, um, and I'd like them to still keep on living um, because they're they're important in ways that are just innumerable. In the ways that they, not to mention that they're just alive and things are good when they're alive, um, but their interconnections with the with the other with the rest of their ecosystems is is something that be it's pretty much beyond us. Uh, we just get little glimpses. Oh, this eats that. Look at that. Um, and and their structures are also really interesting. So, um, so thank you. Thanks for coming. And I'll take questions. Um, but if anybody wants to just get up and look at art, that's that's fine too. What were you going to do? Oh, oh yeah. I was going to pass that around because it arrived and isn't in, up in the show yet. And it isn't like anything else here because it's a it's uh, it's a walk. <laughs> It's a pocket painting. It's, it's uh, I walked around in the fall in a year when the cedars had, had, had cones, and they do this year, too, again. Um, and so everything was shedding seeds all over, and the ground was covered with seeds and needles and bits of things. And I, um, ash seeds, black ash and white ash are in here, um, several kinds of maple. Um, and I just had a pocket, and I put everything in, and I brought it home. It's a, I know. <laughs> what came home in my walk? I should do more of these because it was really fun. And so I brought in all the objects and I made a, a square of, I put a square of canvas and I drew a grid on it and I drew a very light grid on the piece of paper. And I just did one thing after another and kept, kept putting them, I arranged it the way I wanted it because that, that's how that happened. So, so that's that. Any other, other questions? The cell, the picture of the one with the cells? Yeah. How, that, was that a silver point? Or? Yeah, so. How did you get the color in? It looked like it had color. Oh, really? It looked like it had green in it. Maybe I have my imagination. Yeah, I, the room is green. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's that white ground, but there, there's a really color yeah, you talk about silver point, but you did the gold. What happened? What happened when you draw? Oh, nothing. 
Nothing no. at all. <laughs> it's, it's, it's platinum gray. It's lighter than it's silver, stays. and it does not tarnish. Okay. So gold is gold. So whatever line you draw is what you're going to do. Yeah, but it's not gold. Color. Right. It's, it's, it's silver gray. gray. Yeah. Yeah, like platinum would be about the same, but harder. Okay, gold on a creek plate is black, but it doesn't do that for the gold. Uh, it's just not gritty enough. Huh. Yeah, you've used those, haven't you? Yeah. When you're um, using a layer of gold or silver in a mechanical pencil, yeah. how do you keep the, especially with the silver, how do you keep the tip sharp? Sandpaper. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so, do you do the silver point just because it's something different, or is there an advantage? Or I mean, it sounds more like a disadvantage. It's really nerdy. It's really, <laughs> I don't know. It's just I like doing it, I, especially on a ground that's as smooth as those panels I cast around. Um, it it has a feel to it that's just different than rubbing off graphite. It just, it, it just has a good feel to it. And I like the way it looks. And if, you know, and there are silver point artists out there. So both botanical art and silver point, are, they're both in the middle of a big renaissance at the moment. Well, silver point is a little small renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> um, and botanical art is, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of people practicing botanical art right now that you didn't used to be. Silver point and metal point um, can, can be so different from anything else, uh, depend, depending on how you use it. And I, still, I feel like a beginner with it still, but, but, um, but it, it's just, it, it's nice to do. And I like that challenge of not being able to erase. <laughs> Having those lines be as fine as they can. Thanks. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it.